India's foreign trade policy. For almost half a century, India maintained one of the restrictive trade regimes in the world. It imposed a system of high tariffs and stiff non-tariff barriers such as licensing and quotas, which virtually closed the economy from the international trade arena. India implemented economic reform since the middle of 1991 and has made drastic changes in trade policy to reorient itself to integrate with the global economy. Average non-agricultural tariffs have fallen below 15%, quantitative restrictions on imports have been eliminated and foreign investment norms have been relaxed for a number of sectors. India, however, retains its right to protect when need arises. Agricultural tariffs average between 30 to 40 percent. Anti-dumping measures have been liberally used to protect trade and the country is among the few in the world that continue to ban foreign investment in retail trade. Although this policy has been somewhat relaxed recently, it remains considerably restrictive. Nonetheless, in recent years, the government's stand on trade and investment policy has displayed a marked shift from protecting producers to benefiting consumers. This is reflected in its foreign trade policy for 2004-09, which states that, for India to become a major player in world trade, we have also to facilitate those imports which are required to stimulate our economy. India is now aggressively pushing for a more liberal global trade regime, especially in services. It has assumed a leadership role among developing nations in global trade negotiations and played a critical part in the Doha negotiation. In this lesson, we discuss about the foreign trade policy of India. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to Understand India's exim policy just after independence. Describe the various liberalization measures adopted in the trade policy. Exim policy contains various policy decisions taken by the government in the sphere of foreign trade, that is, with respect to imports and exports from the country, more especially export promotion measures, policies and procedures related thereto. It is prepared and announced by the Central Government Ministry of Commerce. India's exim policy in general aims at developing export potential, improving export performance, encouraging foreign trade and creating favorable balance of payments position. The main objective of the government policy is to promote exports to the maximum extent. Exports should be promoted in such a manner that the economy of the country is not affected by unregulated exports of items specially needed within the country. Export control is, therefore, exercised in respect of a limited number of items whose supply position demands that their exports should be regulated in the larger interests of the country. In other words, the policy aims at promoting exports and augmenting foreign exchange earnings and regulating exports wherever it is necessary for the purposes of either avoiding competition among the Indian exporters or ensuring domestic availability of essential items of mass consumption at reasonable prices. The Government of India announced sweeping changes in the trade policy during the year 1991. As a result, the new Export-Import Policy came into force from April 1, 1992. This was an important step towards the economic reforms of India. In order to bring stability and continuity, the policy was made for the duration of five years. In this policy, import was liberalized and export promotion measures were strengthened. The steps were also taken to boost the domestic industrial production. Up to the first plan, approach towards imports was liberal. During the second plan, an aftermath policy of import restriction was adopted. Given the acute shortage of foreign exchange, most of the time, government opted for direct allocation of foreign exchange among different users 
and uses through import licenses. The policy for 1969 placed 260 items or groups of items on the banned list since these commodities could be supplied in sufficient quantity from domestic production. Imports of another 197 items were allowed to actual users on a restricted basis as the domestic production of these items had increased substantially. The policy of import restriction was pursued up to 1977-79. Since 1979 and up to the early 1990s, policy of import substitution was followed. From 1995 onwards, liberalization policy was initiated. India's import substitution and an inward-looking policy regime resulted in high tariffs on many products and creation of non-tariff barriers, NTBs. Hence, reduction and rationalization of tariffs and removal of NTBs has been an integral part of India's trade policy since 1991. India has taken major steps towards trade liberalizations since 1991, partly on its own initiative and partly from commitments to WTO. In India, the main legislation concerning foreign trade is the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992. The Act provides for the development and regulation of foreign trade by facilitating imports into and augmenting exports from India and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. As per the provisions of the Act, the government 1. May make provisions for facilitating and controlling foreign trade. 2. May prohibit, restrict and regulate exports and imports in all or specified cases as well as subject them to exemptions. 3. Is authorized to formulate and announce an export and import policy and also amend the same from time to time by notification in the official gazette. 4. Is also authorized to appoint a Director General of Foreign Trade for the purpose of the Act, including formulation and implementation of the Export-Import Policy. Accordingly, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry has been set up as the most important organ concerned with the promotion and regulation of foreign trade in India. In exercise of the powers conferred by the Act, the Ministry notifies the trade policy on a regular basis with certain underlined objectives. The earlier trade policies were based on the objectives of self-reliance and self-sufficiency. While the latter policies were driven by factors like export-led growth, improving efficiency and competitiveness of the Indian industries, etc. It was obvious that the only way to increase exports was to make Indian industry globally competitive by exposing it to international competition. The need for import of world-class technology existed. Thus, the government had to come out with a two-pronged strategy. A. To reduce tariff barriers and allow freer imports. B. To encourage exports. Exim policy 1992-97 was in fact a statement from the government that it was, it was committed to remove the controls on India's international trade and give an impetus to private sector participation in various sectors of the economy. The focus of Exim policy 92 to 97 was to harmonize national priorities with global changes, to liberalize trade, to accelerate pace of reforms, and to promote and sustain export growth. Some of the significant measures were liberalization of controls on imports and exports, Exports Promotion Capital Goods Scheme, EPCG, ModVAT Credit to Importers, Administrative Procedures Simplified. Incentive schemes have been expanded by way of addition of new products and markets. 26 new markets have been added under Focus Market Scheme. These include 16 new markets in Latin America and 10 in, in Asia Oceania. The incentive available under Focus Market Scheme, FMS, has been raised from 2.5% to 3%. The incentive available under Focus Product Scheme, FPS, 
has been raised from 1.25% to 2%. A large number of products from various sectors have been included for benefit under FPS. These include engineering products, plastic jute and sisal products, technical textiles, green technology products, project goods, vegetable textiles, and certain electronic items. To increase the life of existing plant and machinery, export obligation on import of spares, molds, etc. under EPCG scheme has been reduced to 50% of the normal specific export obligation. To aid technological upgradation of our export sector, EPCG scheme at zero duty has been introduced. Focus product scheme benefit extended for export of green products and for export of some products originating from the Northeast. Transferability for the duty credit scripts being issued to status holders under paragraph 3.9.6 of FTP under VKGUY scheme has been permitted. Let us now have a look on annual supplement 2008-09. Duty Entitlement Passbook DEPB scheme was incorporated earlier to impart continuity and stability to a foreign trade regime. DEPB scheme was extended till May 2009. The government had already announced refund of service tax on almost all the services which are directly related to export production and supply. Some services related to export which do not attract service tax have also been clarified through a circular. A few remaining issues regarding refund of service tax will also be resolved shortly. Income tax benefit to 100% EOUs under Section 10B of IT Act was extended by government for one more year beyond 31-3-2009. Under sectoral incentives, IT hardware sector a special focus initiative, specific items to be included for benefits under high-tech product scheme. Setting up a new export promotion council for telecom sector to provide institutional support to exports from telecom sector. Export of toys and sports goods will be given an additional duty credit script at the rate 5% in addition to the existing benefits under focus product scheme. Additional duty credit script of 2.5% over and above the normal benefit available under VK Guy for export of certain flowers, vegetables and fruits. Interest subvention provided last year to sectors affected by rupee appreciation and to SMEs has been extended by one more year. Reduced average export obligation under EPCG for sectors which have witnessed decline in exports in the previous year. An enhanced duty credit script of 2.5% would be allowed for export of high value added manufactured products. The list of products will be notified separately. Export promotion capital goods EPCG scheme are the customs duty payable under EPCG scheme has been reduced from 5% to 3%. To improve export competitiveness of Indian exports, all exports made towards fulfillment of export ob obligation under EPCG scheme will now be eligible for incentives or rewards under promotional schemes and an average export obligation under EPCG for premier trading houses shall as an option be calculated based on the average of last five years export instead of the present three years. Focus on market and product schemes was improved. Substantive measures were taken to facilitate exports. Advanced authorization scheme and EPCG scheme will be EDI enabled through the electronic message exchange with effect from 1-7-2009. This will do away with the present requirement of physical verification and registration at customs end. Export-oriented units are now allowed to pay excise duty on monthly basis instead of the present system of paying duty on consignment basis 
subject to conditions or documentations to be notified by Department of Revenue. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. EPCG stands for Export Promotion Capital Goods. Right or wrong? Right. The focus of Exim policy 1992-97 to was to harmonize national priorities with global changes to liberalize trade, to accelerate pace of reforms, and to promote and sustain export growth. Right or wrong? Right. An increase in tariffs and removal of NTBs has been an integral part of India's trade policy since 1991. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. India's import substitution and an inward-looking policy regime resulted in high tariffs on many products and creation of non-tariff barriers. Hence, reduction and rationalization of tariffs and removal of NTVs has been an integral part of India's trade policy since 1991. India has taken major steps towards liberalization since 1991 partly on its own initiative and partly from its commitments to WTO. In India, the main legislation concerning foreign trade is the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992. With economic reforms, globalization of the Indian economy has been the guiding factor in formulating the trade policies. The reform measures introduced in the subsequent policies have focused on liberalization, openness and transparency. They have provided an export-friendly environment by simplifying the procedures for trade facilitation. The announcement of a new foreign trade policy for a five-year period of, from 2004-09, replacing the hitherto nomenclature of Exim policy by foreign trade policy, FTP, is another step in this direction. It takes an integrated view of the overall development of India's foreign trade and provides a roadmap for the development of this sector. A vigorous export-led growth strategy of doubling India's share in global merchandise trade in the next five years, with a focus on the sectors having prospects for export expansion and pot potential for employment generation, constitute the main plank of the policy. All such measures are expected to enhance India's international competitiveness and aid in further increasing the acceptability of Indian exports. The policy sets out the core objectives, identifies key strategies, spells out focus initiatives, outlines export initiatives, and also addresses issues concerning institutional support, including simplification of procedures relating to export activities. The average tariff on consumer goods in 1997-99 was reduced to 25% as against 153% in 1990-91. The 2000-2001 budget reduced the peak rate to 39.5%. However, the additional special duty and countervailing duties add up and increase the tariff. Thus, simply comparing the peak rates will not give a real picture of trade restrictions. Though the peak rate is used as a guide for imp imposing tariff, applied tariff can be much higher but below the bound rates. India's applied rates on several items are still very high compared to the Asian countries. Though policymakers have mentioned on several occasions inside and outside the parliament that India's tariff will be similar to Asian very soon with the present tariff structure, it is very difficult to expect that it would happen that soon. India has 69% of its tariff lines compared to 6% prior to the UR. All agricultural tariff lines and 62% of the tariff lines of industrial goods are bound. Though at present the applied rates are below the bound levels, producer lobby may put pressure at any time on government to impose tariff very close to the bound rate. If that happens, this would be equivalent to the previous license Raj system.